discouragement, fear, failure. Only a few years ago, these stalked the nation. Depression haunted America. We groped, we struggled, we found the way to better times. Depression is a fading memory. Millions of men and women have found employment and with it confidence and hope. The Great Works program has removed a vast army from relief roads. It revived lagging industry, restored morale, and renewed courage. In a program which covers the entire nation, Minnesota takes an important place. Minnesota, the land of the sky blue water, land of promise and fulfillment. Bread for nations from its vast wheat fields and flour mills, game for hunters in the forest wilderness, fish lurking in its spring-fed streams to tempt the angler. From the Iowa line northward toward Canada lies a paradise of green and silver and blue. Green forests, silver streams, the blue of 10,000 lakes. From wide plains of fertile pasture land go milk and butter and cheese to the far corners of the nation. And endless seas of gold and grain to satisfy the needs of a continent. But for life, there must be water. And for three years, drought has brought suffering and desolation, dry lake beds and parched fields, and fire has had its part in the destruction. <laughs> to protect property and safeguard human life, CCC boys and WPA men joined state forces in subduing the flames. The resources of government were turned to the construction of ranger stations and lookout towers and the cutting of fire breaks to prevent widespread disaster in the future. In the devastation of crops and the destruction of property, drought and fire are rivaled only by the power of their natural enemy. In the same region where drought has brought destruction, floods have wrought havoc. Utilizing flood waters to combat drought in a series of dams and lakes at Loch Kapal, an ingenious WPA project will add greatly to the water resources of the region. The Silver Lake Dam at Rochester will serve the state in two ways, by the conservation of water and by the development of a new recreation area. Another conservation project is already completed at Whetstone, and a third is underway near Pipestone. Unique in conservation developments are the Type C dams originated in Minnesota to maintain lake levels. Conserving water supplies resulting from spring thaws, this program will alleviate the ravages of future drought. The study of hydraulics will be undertaken in the University of Minnesota Experimental Laboratory nearing completion on the banks of the Mississippi. The Father of Waters is rapidly being developed as a great traffic artery of the continent. A huge barge terminal constructed by WPA at St. Paul will play an important part in this restoration. Throughout the state, recreational areas such as Park Point at Duluth are being developed for the benefit of both tourists and local residents. Among other projects, we find a swimming pool at Springfield, one of many constructed by WPA. Two large vacation camps have been established for the benefit of underprivileged children. In the boys' camp at Shakopee, 200 youngsters play their way to health for two weeks every summer. Providing children of needy parents with medical supervision and preschool training, a number of nursery schools are operated as part of a nationwide educational program in which WPA has helped millions of children and adults.
Operated in cooperation with the Minneapolis Board of Health, the Lyman-Hurst Hospital is the only institution of its kind in existence. Here, children suspected of heart ailments are placed under observation and restored to health. Under the program for rehabilitation and the conservation of human resources comes the WPA Household Arts Training School at St. Paul. In this school, future housewives are instructed in the art of making a home, and inexperienced girls from relief families are given training which will make them self-supporting. As the girls master each branch of household art, their progress is indicated on a chart as an incentive to others in the class. Upon graduation, the girls are placed through an employment service conducted by the works program. Long before the first white settler found his way to Minnesota, the native Chippewa and Sioux Indians exercised their primitive arts. Now their skill is being restored and their arts revived in weaving, basketry, beadwork, and embroidering groups. Much of the ancient Indian culture is being brought to light by archaeological explorations sponsored by the State University. Rich in natural resources, Minnesota provides native materials for the important construction program. Stone quarried at St. Paul is used in many projects. Local quarries provide stone for construction at Camp Ripley. At Rockville, this modern school has been built of native pink granite to replace an antiquated structure which stands nearby. Also nearing completion is the imposing new Brainerd Armory. Like all agricultural states, Minnesota has suffered great loss through lack of adequate farm-to-market roads. In a great construction program which makes use of native materials and provides employment for thousands of skilled and unskilled workers, WPA has built or improved thousands of miles of all-weather roads, which will give the farmer access to markets and permit tourists to visit all parts of the state. Traffic control is combined with construction work in the building of a belt line at the intersection of highways approaching Minneapolis. Minnesota's State Fair is a great institution in which agriculture, industry, commerce, and the arts find a common meeting ground. The immense swine barn, grandstand additions, and huge parking space are among WPA's many contributions, which helped to attract over 600,000 visitors in 1936. This great gathering attests economic improvement and gives assurance that the permanent improvements of the works program will remain, long after depression is forgotten, as part of a better Minnesota.